Hello everyone, this is Skip Farr from Hard Dollar Corporation. This session is uh, geared toward basic data type setup, general information. I won't get involved into resource data and stuff of that nature, but some uh, stuff that you may not be aware of or kind of have overlooked. So I just want to cover a few of those things. I'll use my little training job. I'm going to start in the library. In the library, we have an address book. This is used for a number of different ways in hard dollar. Of course, it's used for taking quotes. Who you take quotes from? We choose somebody from the address book. You can set up your data, your contacts, your sellers, your subcontractors, your vendors, your agencies. Use it as a big Rolodex card if you like. If you do have contacts in Outlook, we will import those directly for you from Outlook. Okay. The uh, register hot columns themselves are pretty basic information. I'm going to scroll over to the right. You see we have additional tag fields that you can set up. Again, these were great for sorting, grouping, and finding particular types of contacts. So quick way to help and sort that. But then when I open up a record, there's more information there as well. I'm going to open up this record for uh, Albert. Right click, choose open. What you see here are simply the items on the register, the columns that you have. There's additional information. Notes, are they licensed, bonded, are they minorities? This default quote. This is in, in conjunction with the RFQ or taking quotes. What I've set up for this particular company, this quote group tag, so he always quotes the items that I've tagged landscape work. So when I do take an RFQ or a quote, I just choose this seller and uh, the system says, oh, do any items that you've tagged landscape work, then we know what the items are. So the library has some basic information that can be set up and utilized within the system. Also the library has what we call a trench calculator for those who are involved in pipe work and uh, that kind of thing. You can set up different configurations for your trench. I have an example here. I'm going to open up the record. So basically what this is, is the ability to have some standard sections already drawn for a certain size of size of pipe. So I've got some uh, set up here already. Diameter, in other words, I've got a 24 inch pipe. I can set some standard beddings up inch and so forth. So whenever I want to use a 24 inch sewer pipe for any cost item in hard dollar, I've already got it created. I just have to change a few parameters and I'm off and going. So you can set up some trench configurations if you like. You can also set up different shift rate calculators. These are stored in the library. For instance, I got one here called Saturday work. In other words, I'm working Monday through Friday, 10 hours, 8 hours scale 1, 2 hours scale 2, but all 8 hours on Saturday are at scale 2. So I set up some different shift arrangements. They can have those set up for you and then utilized within the particular job on your cost basis tab of the job properties form. So doesn't take long to do this. It can help you have some preset stuff so you're not doing them over and over again every time you might want something. I'm going to go back to the job now. Look at a couple forms there. The job properties. I'm going to click on the security tab. This allows you to have some kind of restriction. Think of this as the two extremes. One is extremely specific. One is only for the job itself. So if you wanted to set up what we call field level protection numbers, you can protect any specific field in hard dollar from being changed if you want to. And all you do is click here. This tells you how to lock or unlock it. And basically you hold the shift key and right click on the item. So I'm going to put a tag uh, password in here. I have to repeat it. So I set it up. I'll click OK and get out of here. And let's say I want to uh, open up the CVS register. See, for some reason, I don't want 
these quantities changed. Hold my shift key down, right click, and say lock. Put in my password, and you see the color, it's blue, um, excuse me, yellow. Well, let's look at these colors. The yellow says it's protected, unlocked. Protected would be a different color. What that means is that I'm in a job where I created the pass password, so the color means that I can edit this. Now, if you're on a network and somebody else opened up this job, that would be the protected color, and they couldn't change this unless they knew the password. I'm going to right, hold my shift key down, right click, and say unlock, and I'm back to where I was. Go back to my job properties form. That's what I was doing here. Okay. Now this one here is the ability to decide who can actually get into a job. Now your IT people can set up different user groups, hard dollar groups within your network system, and you would choose the groups. So if you only wanted certain people to have access to the job, that's what this would allow you to do. Okay. Cover sheet. Remember I said we could set up different ship arrangements in the lib library? What's nice about all this is that, you know, you may want to, after you've developed the estimate, decide, I wonder what the cost impact would be if I have to choose a ship that has some overtime. Maybe that would impact my schedule and durations. Maybe I was already linked to a schedule. So I could say, hey, let's change my shift arrangement. I click here and say, you know, load from the library. I could load any one of those shift arrangements I wanted. If I did, the job would be recalculated for me. If I click OK and click OK, I have a new calculation job dollar-wise. If I was connected to the schedule, I'd see the impact on durations. You could do that. Maybe you're involved in a liquidated damages sit situation where your schedule think is going to be over the time uh, allowed that you've been given. Well, you can compare the additional cost in overtime versus will it reduce my amount of time to get the work done. Shift arrangements, taking advantage of data we've set up in the library. There's another little data here. It's called competitors. This is very simple. All it is is the ability to compare your price with somebody else. And somebody else is, again, somebody from the address book. So you could choose the company, enter in their bid, and then we will compare that to your bid for this particular job. A very simple comparison, not any more involved than that. One other thing I thought I'd look at as far as data setup. On the foundation setup data register, you got a column for account codes. Now, these would represent your own budgeting codes for your budget that you'd send out to your county system and so forth. Well, some people want to have a quantity for their account code. Well, obviously that account code can be applied to multiple cost items in your CBS register. So this doesn't apply all the time, but if you had items that were given this account code to those items that had a unit you know, of measure cubic yards, and you wanted to have a quantity for you, the auto quantity, if I click that and click off, it calculates the quantity for me. So basically it added up all those cost items where I had a measurement type called cubic yard, or essentially uh, volume, and it said, oh, there's 100. So this auto quantity, uh, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not, it just depends upon the situation. But uh, at times it can be kind of handy to make sure you get the right quantity you might want for any particular account code. Well, these are just a few of the uh, setup data information that you can have pre-done and can help for you when you are, are involved in the estimating process. So you have to keep redoing things over and over again. Well, that's all I have for this session. Thank you. I appreciate your time.